This is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And this is Hogwarts Legacy. Hey there friends, how's it going? I'm Ben Snow and today we're gonna compare the old Harry Potter game to Hogwarts Legacy. We're gonna take a look at some of the iconic locations like the common rooms, different classrooms, courtyards, as well as go over some of the differences and similarities both of these titles have. I'm sure many fans are familiar with both of these titles, but just in case, let's go over some of the basics. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince was a follow-up action-adventure video game to the sixth Harry Potter film. It was published by Electronic Arts in 2009 for various platforms including PS2, Xbox 360, Nintendo DS, and PC. The game followed the same storyline as the film, where you played as Harry, only switching to Ginny during Quidditch practices and taking control over Ron during the love potion scenes. Hogwarts Legacy, on the other hand, is a standalone open-world action role-playing game with its original story that takes place in the late 1800s, a hundred years before the boy who lived. Developed by Avalanche Software and published by Warner Brothers on February 10th, 2023 for multiple platforms including PS5, Xbox Series S and X, and PC. The game has you, the player, take center stage in discovering your own significant role in determining the future of the wizarding world. In Havelock Prince, you, of course, reside in Gryffindor's common room, which is a very close replica of the movie version. It has a vibe of a warm, inviting, safe place. And while Hogwarts Legacy's Gryffindor common room also has the same cozy and welcoming vibe, the game lets you choose between four different common rooms for Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. Each has their own personality, even the background music is unique to each dormitory. If you're interested in taking a closer look at each and every common room, I'll make sure to put the video in the description. Unlike in Order of the Phoenix video game, where you could attend several different classes, or more like partake in class-related quests, in Haplet Prince, the only class you take is potions. Even in the Herbology Greenhouses, for some reason. In Hogwarts Legacy, you've got charms, potions, transfiguration, defense against the dark arts, herbology, divination, care for magical creatures, as well as flying lessons. And uh, talking about flying, in Half-Blood Prince, that was probably the most annoying part of the game, which forced you to fly through stars while calling it Quidditch. Interestingly, Hogwarts Legacy also has somewhat similar activity. You can partake in different broom races identified in the wild by these balloons with stars on them, though only as a side activity. There is no playable Quidditch in the game, and Broom Flight has a more practical use, and specifically navigating across the vast lands surrounding Hogwarts. You can also have a Hippogriff to fly around the Overland or use Flu Network for fast travel. There is no fast travel in Hapla Prince, though Harry's speedrunning might be even faster than those brooms from the late 1800s. As part of combat, in Hoblet Prince you can enroll in dueling clubs, one for each house, where you duel with students using a whopping list of five offensive spells. And in Hogwarts Legacy 2 there is a dueling club run by Lucan Brattleby, where you can combat with students using upwards of 20 different spells. Though, while in Hoblet Prince, dueling clubs was the only place you could engage in combat, Outside of some isolated moments where you battle, like Malfoy, Grab and Goyle, or the Death Eaters, in Hogwarts Legacy you can find lots of combat possibilities outside Hogwarts, whether it's an enemy camp, random encounters, dungeons, or you can battle waves of enemies in different battle arenas. But where Hapla Prince stands out the most is the castle. It had a very detailed model of Hogwarts, the same model that was used in the Order of the Phoenix, only with some improvements. You can now change the camera angles, the textures look much better, and a lot of animations worked with more fluidity. And you can now explore new areas like the training grounds in the back of the castle, the astronomy tower, they even added the caves nodding to the secret passageways leading outside the castle. And uh, when you look at Hogwarts Legacy's Hogwarts, you see no less than five years worth of tireless work of designers, engineers, 
studying the lore, studying architecture, and bringing this iconic castle in such detail, it's mind-blowing. Every corridor, every courtyard and classroom tell their own stories. And this Hogwarts feels alive, like a sentient being. It is familiar and new at the same time, with rooms and areas we've never seen before on screen. It's a great blend of the movie interpretations and book descriptions of the castle. You can even find quotes from the books replicated in the design of the castle. This is the most authentic version of Hogwarts yet. And there's so much to do in it. You can discover secret passageways, hidden rooms, get involved in side quests from NPCs, or spend hours customizing the room of requirements. And I don't know, breed your fantastic beasts? By the way, in Havla Prince, the beasts are almost non-existent, though you do have a few things to do around the castle, like collect um, the shields, or brew more potions, or fix up Hogwarts a little bit. Though, since this isn't an open-world game, you can't go much beyond the, like, Owlry and Hagrid's hut. And in Hogwarts Legacy, there's a whole new world with different environments, settlements, dungeons, quest opportunities, secrets, and puzzles. I can keep going on and on about this, but keep in mind, I'm not trying to, by any means, to poop on Havla Prince by showing how better Hogwarts Legacy is, because of course it is. There is a multi-generational gap between both of these very different games. But I had a lot of fun playing Havla Prince while capturing gameplay for this video. For its time, it had an impressive model of Hogwarts and interesting things to do, and I appreciate it for what it was. And I hope you do too, as you get ready for an ultimate Wizarding World experience in Hogwarts Legacy. Thanks for watching.